Located right in the heart of Moscow, the Kremlin is one of the most fascinating pieces of architecture not just in the history of Russia, but also in the whole world. Even if you've never been to Russia, it's hard not to recognize the Kremlin's towers. But what makes this building so special? Well, Besides the fact that it was once the center of the Russian Orthodox Church, the Moscow Kremlin holds many secrets not known to the public. Let's dive into them. Welcome to Super Rich Daily. In this video, we're going to give you a roundup of all you need to know about Russia's iconic Kremlin. So, what exactly is the Kremlin? For those of you who don't know, the Kremlin is one of the world's oldest and most fortified complexes. Inside the Kremlin, you have five palaces and four cathedrals. Overall, the Kremlin is made up of more than 15 buildings, 20 towers, and walls that are 21 feet thick to make sure that the complex stays protected at all times. The highlight of the Kremlin in recent times has been the Grand Kremlin Palace, which has been the official residence of Russia's current president Vladimir Putin since 1991. Since Putin made the complex his official residence, the entire structure is now protected by a military regiment to keep things extra safe. While it wasn't as protected before, the Kremlin has always been a site of Russia's government and the elite. It was initially built in 1367 and was then rebuilt a century later to give the complex its current modern form. The walls of the Kremlin are currently surrounded by 20 different towers and visitors are only allowed to enter some of them. One of these includes the Trinity Tower through which you enter the structure. Some of these towers are rumored to have secret tunnels that run beneath the Kremlin, leading to other parts of the city. These underground structures were also used to house prisoners. In fact, in 1525, the underground vaults of the Beklemyshevskaya Tower were used as a dungeon and a torture chamber. Its neighboring Konstantino Eleninsky Tower is connected to the Beklemyshevskaya by an underground passage, which was also converted into a dungeon. Out of the 20 Kremlin Towers, only two don't have proper names. They are called the first and second unnamed. The tallest one is the 80-meter-high Troitskaya Tower, while the most recognizable is Spaskaya Tower, also known as the Kremlin Clock. In the heart of the Kremlin complex is the area known as Cathedral Square, which features Assumption, Archangel, and Annunciation Cathedrals, the Church of Laying Our Lady's Holy Robe, the Patriarch's Palace with the Twelve Apostles Church, and the Ivan the Great Bell Tower complex, as well as Exhibition Halls. Assumption Cathedral is the oldest and most important church in the Kremlin. Why? Well, because this is where all of Russia's Tsars were crowned. The building also served as the headquarters for Russia's Orthodox Church in the 12th century. Another important church is the Archangel Cathedral, which contains the tombs of everyone who has ruled Russia from the 14th century until Peter the Great moved the capital to St. Petersburg. Then we have the Annunciation Cathedral, which was never open to the public because it served as a private chapel for Moscow's princes and czars. It also features a display inside its basement for visitors to marvel at. The Kremlin has tons of displays that date back centuries ago and stand as symbols of Russia's history. One of these displays is the Tsar Cannon, also known as the world's biggest cannon. It was built in 1586 in Moscow and now rests in the Kremlin. With the Tsar Cannon, we have the Tsar Bell, which is, once again, the biggest bell in the world. The bell was commissioned by Empress Anna Ivanova, niece of Peter the Great, and just like the cannon, it has never really been used. However, if you really do want to be amazed, I'd suggest you visit the Ivan the Great Bell Tower, the Kremlin's tallest. Standing at 81 meters, this tower was the first ever skyscraper in Moscow and is now used as a watchtower because of its height. When Napoleon's army invaded Moscow, they destroyed the Uspenskaya Bell Tower and Filaret Annex, but the Ivan the Great Tower escaped destruction by Napoleon's army and the Soviets and remains today one of the Kremlin's most striking ensembles. Moving on from the towers and churches, one of the most impressive parts of the Kremlin is the armory. A visit to the armory costs about $15 and is worth every penny. While you might think that the space only holds arms and weapons, the truth is that the armory gives you access to a museum that displays some of the most important objects from Russia's history. This includes ancient state regalia, royal garments, gold and silverware, along with arms and armor. The rest of the area consists of magnificent jewels, the dresser worn in carriages used by Catherine the Great, and thrones that have been used by the Tsars for centuries. The state armory collections are one of the world's most famous treasure houses. The armory's nine halls display over a thousand exhibits, some of which date back centuries earlier. The right-hand wing of the armory chamber building has a permanent display of the State Diamond Fund of Russia, which displays unique gems, jewelry, gold, platinum nuggets, and of course, diamonds. 
Right from the armory, you enter the Terran Palace, which was the first official home of the Russian royal family. The palace is one of the Kremlin's hidden gems and you can only see the structure's golden domes from the outside. For the rest, you have to go in and find out for yourself. The Terran Palace was built in 1636 for Tsar Mikhail Fyodorovich, the grandfather of Peter I, in Uzurochye, a traditional Russian architectural style defined by complex forms, rich fancy decorations, and picturesque skylines. The rooms of the palace are beautifully decorated with mural paintings representing the saints. The palace is also home to the throne room, featuring the Tsar's armchair in its red corner and the emblems of provinces on the pillars and vaults. The Terran Palace is one of the most ancient monuments of Russian history. However, if you're looking to move away from all the history and take a breath of fresh air, the Cathedral Square leads right into the Alexander Garden, which was one of the first urban parks in Russia. The Alexander Garden sits along the Kremlin's western walls. It contains three separate gardens with colorful flowerbeds, tall trees, and manicured grass. Part of the garden is now closed off to the public because it serves as the site for the Russian president's helicopter landing pad. Speaking of the president, the most important and grand structure inside the Kremlin is the Grand Kremlin Palace, also known as the official residence of the President of the Russian Federation, which is not open to the public. However, that does not stop anyone from taking in the outside view. The Grand Palace was built in the 19th century to unite all the separate buildings of the Tsar's court. The main facade extends for 125 meters along the brow of the Borovitsky Hill. The windows might suggest a three-story building, but in fact, there are only two. There are state rooms on the upper level, and the architect built them with a double set of windows. The building was always planned as the residence of emperors. The structure mainly serves to demonstrate the power and influence of the Russian Empire. It's built with 700 rooms and has five main halls corresponding to the five Russian imperial orders. Currently, the Grand Kremlin Palace is used for official ceremonies, diplomatic affairs, and meetings. It cost about 150,000 US dollars to build in the 18th century. Out of the Grand Palace's five halls, the St. George Hall is the largest. With a floor made of 20 types of wood and five magnificent chandeliers lighting up the room, the St. George's Hall is the go-to ceremonial hall for official events. And finally, we have the Catherine Hall, named after the country's longest ruling female leader. Considering all of this, it's no surprise that the Kremlin serves as the heart of Moscow and is a standing testament to Russia's magnificent history. Since ancient times, it has been and still remains a political, spiritual, and cultural center for the country. From disappearing eagles to record-breaking bells and cannons, the Kremlin definitely has enough attractions to take you back in history and keep you busy for days.